This is Banjo, and today I'm going to explain and demonstrate the use of the radar system in the Sukhoi 27 for DCS World. The radar's primary use lies in the Beyond Visual Range Master Mode, which we can see indicated on the HUD. When activated, we can see the HUD symbology has changed, which I'll explain in a moment. We can see our weapon stations are selected underneath the HUD, and we can see the heads down display symbology has changed as well. Looking at the HUD, in the lower left we're able to see our current Master Mode selected, Beyond Visual Range. In the lower right, we're able to see our current weapons selected, as well as our current pylon selected underneath the HUD. Displayed in the upper left is our current airspeed, calibrated for true airspeed when in the beyond visual range mode, unlike in navigation, which is calibrated for indicator. Current altitude is displayed in the upper right, as well as our current heading displayed in the upper center. In the center, the aircraft datum is displayed in relation to the horizon line. On the heads down display, we can see the symbol representing our own ship, display range in the lower left, and true airspeed in the lower right. At this point, we'll activate the radar by pressing the I key on the keyboard, and we're able to see the symbology change yet again. Displayed in the lower center, we see the letters ILL, -L, as well as the letters RL displayed on the left. This indicates the radar is currently in operation. If I engage the electro-optical system, we're able to see the radar is overridden, and EO is displayed in place of RL on the left side of the HUD. Above BVR, we're able to see we're currently in scan mode. The display range for the HUD is indicated on the top of the vertical line on the left side of the HUD, with horizontal hash marks for every fifth of the display range, which in this case is 50 kilometers, so each hash mark is 10 kilometers. A contact's height on the display indicates its range, with lower indicating closer, and higher on the display indicating further range. Any contact exceeding the current display range will be drawn at the top of the display. The heads down display will also be adjusted as display range is increased or decreased. The vertical line on the right side of the display indicates the aircraft boresight in relation to the radar's pitch elevation. The two horizontal hash marks which we see currently descending indicate the aircraft's current boresight position, while the fixed horizontal line is the current elevation stepping for the pitch axis of the radar antenna. As the radar will auto-level itself with the terrain, so if I wanted to slew the radar to see the current boresight position, I would place the elevation step inside the horizontal boresight indicators. And as I return to level flight, I would place the elevation step back to neutral. Inside the aircraft datum, we can see a hollow rectangle. This is the target designator cursor, which you'd place over an aircraft and press target lock to lock up the aircraft. Underneath the target designator cursor, we can see a wide horizontal line known as the azimuth coverage bar. The azimuth coverage bar represents the 60 degree scan arc. It can be slewed in fixed locations to the left, right, or center. We can see this displayed on the heads down display as well. Note the coverage bar disappear on the heads down display when the radar is disabled. Below the azimuth coverage bar, we can see the digits 10.0 displayed. This is the expected range to target. This works in conjunction with the antenna's altitude stepping to allow us to slew the antenna in 1000 meter increments at the expected range. So for example, at 10 kilometers, one positive adjustment of the altitude stepping would set the radar to center at 2700 meters, as my current altitude is 1700. Naturally, at 20 kilometers, it would be twice the distance, and at 5 kilometers, it would be half. So as expected range to target is increased, the actual degrees in elevation that are adjusted for the radar antenna for each altitude step are lower, whereas if the expected range to target is decreased, we're able to see the degrees in pitch for each adjustment are quite higher. This is meant for use with ground control intercept or AWACS as you'd set the range that would call to you. Though we can see we can use it as a sensitivity adjustment for the pitch axis of the radar antenna slewing. When air-to-air -air weapons are carried, we're able to see the dynamic launch zone as displayed for the currently selected weapon, extending from the front of the own ship symbol on the heads down display. The current pulse repetition frequency selected for the radar is displayed below the display range we're able to see. We have settings for interleave, which will assist in targeting hot and cold aircraft at a reduced range. High, which provides us the maximum range for targeting hot aircraft. And medium, which provides us the maximum range for targeting cold aircraft. These will be explained in more detail momentarily. At this point, the symbology of scan mode has been explained, so I'll spawn in some air contacts and we're able to see them drawn on the display. We can see a slight delay as the rest pop in as it takes a moment for the radar to scan a given piece of air. The width of a contact on the display indicates the contact's radar cross-section. For example, this target at the top is 4 dots wide, he's a B-52 bomber. The two targets at 70 kilometers are fighters, and the two targets at 60 kilometers are friendly fighters. We're able to see in comparison to the single dashes, the friendly contacts show up as a stacked dash. We're able to see the display range of 100 kilometers, the B-52 is drawn at the top of the display, is slightly further than 100 kilometers, but anything further than the current display range will be displayed at the top of the display. 
Any detected contact will also be displayed on the heads down display. The cross stroke of the contact indicates the target's altitude with the length stroke indicating their airspeed. This back target is at a high altitude with a mid airspeed. The lower left target is at a low altitude with a high airspeed. And the lower right target is at a mid altitude with a mid airspeed. We're able to see that the target's azimuth is displayed with these lower contacts going to the lower right and the top contact headed straight for me. Opening the F-10 map view to confirm what we're seeing on the heads down display, we're able to see the azimuth of the lower targets going off to the right of me with the back target head straight for me and the cross stroke of the targets matches the altitude and airspeeds displayed here. Any detected friendly contacts will be displayed with a circle at the back of the cross stroke as is the case with the contacts in the lower right on the display. When target aspect is unknown, interleaved pulse repetition frequency is used as it can detect targets that are hot or cold although at a reduced range from high or medium. We're able to see on high we can detect the two fighters that are hot on us at about 70 kilometers while on medium frequency, we can detect the two fighters that are cold away from us at 40 kilometers. We're able to see that there's quite a penalty for setting the wrong pulse repetition frequency, as on high, we're not able to detect the cold fighters at 40, and on medium, we're not able to detect the hot fighters at 70. Here, we're able to see what a contact running an active jammer looks like. And we're able to see on the left side of the display, it says jam, indicating that jamming emissions are detected. We're able to see that we cannot tell the current range to target. We're only able to tell the azimuth of the target. And we're able to see at any display range on any pulse repetition frequency we can detect this target as its jamming emissions are just that strong. You could have the display range set to 5 with pulse repetition on medium and he could be notching us perfectly and we'd still detect him. On the heads down display we can see a dotted line extending from our own ship on the bearing that we detected the jamming signal. As we have no idea of contact range the contact is not displayed. This range has decreased enough, the radar can burn through the jammer, and we're able to see the contact is now displayed on the HUD in addition to his jamming source, and we're able to see that he's displayed on the heads down display as well. At this point, if we lock the target, we'd be able to receive target range, altitude, and airspeed. In this next example, we're able to see how maneuvering while monitoring a contact in scan mode requires you to actively slew the azimuth coverage bar in the direction of the contact. As the contact can be drawn towards the edge of the display, or on the heads down display, towards the edge of the coverage bar, we're able to indicate the edge of our gimbal limit and keep the contact within it, although we still need to manually manipulate the azimuth coverage bar to keep it in the direction of the contact. The one alternative we have is track while scan. When track while scan is activated, we can see it indicated above the BVR master mode in the lower left, Trackwell scan will automatically softlock the highest priority target, namely the closest range target. At this point, we're able to see the contact becomes centered in the display, and we're able to see the range to target indicated on the left in relation to our weapon DLZ. In trackwell scan, pulse repetition frequencies can be selected for high or medium, with interleaving not an option. The azimuth coverage bar will automatically slew itself to center on the bugged target. You will still need to manually slew the antenna's pitch elevation, though antenna azimuth will automatically slew itself to center on the contact. We're able to see, as the contact is brought towards the edge of the gimbal limit, it will start to be drawn towards the edge of the display. If the contact is brought past the edge of the display, lock will be lost. So although the flanker does not carry active weapons, like the F-15, with this powerful trackwell scan mode. Trackwell scan's main purpose in the flanker is to ease tracking of a contact while continuing to scan for other contacts. In trackwell scan, the radar can track up to 10 simultaneous contacts. Automatic lock will occur at a range equal to 85% of the calculated maximum weapon launch range. Although by pressing target lock, you can force a lock earlier. Trackwell scan will not work in the presence of a jammer. As we're able to see, trying to activate it with these jamming targets sends me back into scan mode. With the target locked up, we've entered attack mode, as indicated above BVR. This is also known as single target track. Above attack, we're able to see an A is displayed. This indicates the locked target is hostile. Here we can see a locked friendly is indicated as AFR. The arrow descending along the vertical line on the left indicates the current range to target in relation to the display range. In the upper left, we can see target airspeed displayed above our true airspeed, and in the upper right, we can see target altitude displayed above our altitude. So the target is at 500 kilometers at 2,000 meters altitude. Current radar antenna position is indicated by the circular green dot, which is currently to the left of my boresight. At the moment, it's indicating that our target is off to my left. If I turn into it, we're able to see that we have a circle drawn over the contact, 
allowing us a visual reference to where the contact is. If the radar antenna position falls outside of the HUD, target lock will be broken, though first the attack symbology above BVR will flash. As I break away from the target, we're able to see the radar antenna position slewing off to the left side of my HUD. As it starts to fall outside of the HUD, we'll see attack begin to flash above BVR. Shortly thereafter, I'll lose the target lock. This allows us a small margin of error so that we don't instantly lose the lock when the radar antenna position begins to slew off the screen. With the target locked and single target track, we're able to see an arrow extending from the bottom of the range scale on the left side of the HUD, currently pointing towards me, slightly off to the left. This is the current aspect of the lock target. With the target locked on the heads down display, we're able to see cross stroke and altitude is still displayed, although in this case we have a triangle emanating out the back. This means it's a hostile air target. Here we're able to see what a locked friendly target looks like in single target track. When locking a jamming target, we're able to see that the current range of target is not being updated. In this instance, we'd have to manually set it by adjusting the expected range of target, at which point we could fire a weapon in home on jam mode. At current, I would advise against this, as it's a surefire way to miss your target with the way missiles are currently modeled in DCS World. For the sake of the example, though, I'll fire on the target, and we're able to see when guiding a missile towards the target, the target will flash on the heads down display, or in this case, the dotted line to the bearing of the jammer. As with scan mode, once you close the range for a target that you're tracking in single target track, the radar will burn through the jamming emissions, and you'll be able to detect airspeed, altitude, range, and aspect. One final thing to note is the hash marks along the range scale. The first one indicates the maximum range for a non-maneuvering target, the second, maximum range for a maneuvering target, and the third, minimum range. Due to time constraints, I'll be covering the electro-optical system as well as the close combat modes in a future video.